the first B patch of set 12 is live. There's been quite a few nerfs where they nerfed Ari, they nerfed Nyla, they nerfed Fiora, they nerfed Nasus, they nerfed 5 Pyro, they nerfed 4 Vanguard. So there's been some shifts in the meta. I'm GM Blue, a challenger player. I struggled at the start of this patch and then I kind of figured things out and I've climbed quite a bit since. And I'm here to teach you some of what I've learned. All right, let's start off with one of the simpler compositions in S tier. This is Portal. So if you have a portal emblem, either from Augment or making it with Spatula, this can be quite strong. If you don't get that portal plus one, then you have to find Nora on level eight, which can be quite difficult. This is the ideal level nine board. There's a couple of things I want to note here. First of all, when it comes to rise items, you're looking for as much AP as possible, as well as red buff. That would be the ideal item build. You can also go Morello. You can go Rageblade. You can go Adaptive Helm, but these are the ideal items on him. And then you're looking to get some sort of shred somewhere in the comp, either from Ionic Spark or Shiv. Make sure you don't put the Shiv on Rise. There is currently a bug in 14.16b, the current patch, where he is actually spreading Shiv to his own teammates. And I don't really know what causes it, so be cautious of that. In the early game, you can consider units like Nico that pair well with Zoe and Jace. You can also consider Rumble in the early game, which pairs well with Galio as well as Ezreal. But this is what you're aiming for in the late, late game when you're trying to finish things off. All right, next up, we have another plus one composition. This is Frost plus one. Very strong, especially if you're able to get something like Frosty Frontline, as well as the Emblem. The Emblem goes on to Varus. Varus items are relatively flexible. This is best in slot, but of course, you can get any of this utility that you're getting from Varus here on Nasus as well. That's what this is showing here. Of course, any tank items work on Nasus. So Nasus and Varus are relatively flexible. You can go Deathblade here. You can go Guardbreaker here. You can go even Rageblade if you have to, Runons so on and so forth. But when it comes to Olaf, really recommend trying to get BT plus Giant Slayer. Particularly this Giant Slayer item has a very, very strong negative delta, which means that it improves your average placement by a lot, which means it's a very good item on Olaf. I suspect what happens for Olaf a lot of the time is he gets stuck on the front line. And when you get a Giant Slayer, it helps him not get stuck on that front line and able to jump into the back line. And that's when he really becomes a problem. So highly recommend that you prio Giant Slayer. Otherwise, everything else is relatively flex. Hope that you get this Diana sooner than later, but of course you can play Warwick until then. Next up, we finally have a composition that does not depend on a plus one. This is Kog'Maw Reroll. It's the same as it's been since the launch patch. There are a couple of things I want to note here. First of all, these are the standard builds that you're kind of aiming for for Tristana and Kog'Maw. Kog'Maw is who you want to build first. Pretty much always try to go for Shojin plus Last Whisper. This last item is flexible, but GS is probably ideal. And then when it comes to Tristana, she takes any of your remaining bow items. This build over here is if you get Marksman Toolbox. This is a prism that gives you both snipers focused and fish bones and then you want to pair that with shojin on kogmaw if you can't get exactly this build in other words have shojin as your third item then i generally would not recommend going for this but if you know that you can play exactly this build on kogmaw it's pretty good when it comes to your hero augment choices you can go for zap attack as well as sweet tooth i would not recommend playing molten caramel so the build that you're seeing here is just to show that rumble can kill a lot of tears he can also kill rod with uh, crown Guard, but you should not go for Molten Caramel. There's another composition that works for that, but you can play Sweet Tooth and Zap Attack with this. This is your best in slot for Blitzcrank. Warmogs is also very good on Blitzcrank. And then this is your best in slot for Nunu. You can go Crown Guard in this slot. You can go Declaw in this slot. You can go Archangel in this slot, but Gargoyle and Crown Guard are probably Biss along with BT and Warmogs. So those are the main ways to play Kog'Maw. Just be mindful that you can play around a lot of different hero augments and there's also some specific augments like too healthy and bs best friends this augment as well also quite good Finally, we have in S tier a standard level eight composition that you can play around that does not require a super specific setup, but there are some ways to play into it that are better than others. So first of all, let me just mention some of the augment choices here. Fortune favors the bold. If you get the fortune augment, it is very good. This is the one that rewards you for losing for a long period of time and then winning. Ideally, you're going to lose streak into stage four, win on 4-1, and then you just win the rest of the game. Risky moves. This is just an augment 
that gives you a ton of gold. Those extra resources help you hit the four cost when you need to in stage four. And then Giant and Mighty is just a good combat augment. Golden Quest is also very, very strong with this. So that is the augment that you can get offered on 3-2 right here. That says once you get to 162 gold, you'll get a free two star five cost champion and three items for them. It's absurdly broken, especially if you get something like risky moves into it. Of course, that might be difficult sometimes to uh, survive. But yeah, there's a lot of different ways to play this. And the main thing I want to show here is this is the board without any five cost at all. But of course, this is not a very strong board. You're going to eventually slowly transition this into the max cap board, which is this right here. Okay, so this is what you're eventually trying to get into. This is the level nine board with all the different five costs that you're looking to play around. Of course, you can move items from Fiora over to Camille. If you hit Camille two, you can also move them over to Briar. Although generally speaking, if you are not able to feed the Briar, I do not recommend doing this, but this is your absolute max cap. So this is what you're aiming for. The other board that I showed is sort of the way to get there. There are other things you can do as well that I guess I could show real quickly here. Uh, so you can also play around Olaf. And when it comes to Olaf, the big thing is that you're trying to substitute this shapeshifter with Swain. And then you're also going to play Olaf over Fiora. So it looks something like this, where you drop these two units and then you play Olaf. Let me show this real quick. So we get the Swain in and then you get Olaf in. And this is not very strong. Let me be clear about this. This is a board that you can play on level eight. Uh, you would just want to drop out of uh, one of these units here. So let's just drop out of the Morgana for now. And this would be something that you can play on level eight if you weren't able to find Fiora 2, but you were able to find Olaf 2. Of course, this is not ideal, but this is the flex part of the board. I don't see that many people playing around this line, but I have seen some challengers do it and I have seen it work out for them. So something to be mindful of. But yeah, this is your standard composition. This is what you should default to when you don't have a good spot for any of the reroll compositions that are listed in this patch guide, as well as any of the plus one emblem uh, compositions that you can't play unless you get that emblem. So make sure that you are familiar with how to play Callista. Finally, in S tier, we have the composition that caused the B patch in the first place. That's RE Bastion reroll. You can still argue this is an S tier as long as you get one of the good augments. So I have listed a couple of the best ones here. Prismatic Ticket, by far the best augment for this comp. Both of the hero augments for Lilia and Poppy are quite good. You can also get Upgraded Adventure here. So let me go ahead and show that. Upgraded Adventure, this is the thing that gives you a huge reward if you get four champions to three star. You can also get Silver Ticket, which is the scuffed version of Prismatic Ticket. You can also get something like Pandora's that can be quite good. Uh, both versions, by the way, Pandora's Bench and Pandora's items can be quite good. Uh, component Buffet is also good. Anything that guarantees perfect items, because as you can see, there's a lot of rods that are required to make this composition work. If you're really trying to itemize everybody, it's quite good to be able to guarantee those perfect components. Okay, so when it comes to the hero augments, I'm showing some of the best in slot builds that you can consider here. So BT double Sterics, very good on Poppy. You can also go double BT plus Sterics for kind of unique builds that not a lot of people are talking about but are actually quite strong. Uh, your standard build is BT Sterex plus Titans. You can also go IE in this final slot. You can go Hodge IE. You can go Edge of Night. There's a lot of different ways to itemize Poppy, but this is what I have seen as being the best. Uh, on Lilia, the main thing is that you want to make sure that you get Bloodthirster plus either Crown Guard or Ionic Spark. The best third item is whichever one you didn't get. So if you have Crown Guard, then you want Ionic. If you got Ionic, you want Crown Guard. But if you can't get that as your third item, there's a lot of different options that are acceptable, like Warmogs is quite good. Uh, there's also Archangel that can be quite good, but ideally you're able to get both Crown Guard and Ionic Spark. When it comes to itemizing Ari here, the big thing of note here is that Adaptive Helm is better than Blue Buff, so try to make sure that you're able to get Adaptive Helm onto her. Double Adaptive is quite strong. You can also go Adaptive plus any Rod item is quite good as well. There's also a crit base build that you can go for, which would be the blue buff, guard breaker, jeweled gauntlet. You can also go for Rabadons plus jeweled gauntlet and adaptive. There's a lot of ways to build Ari. The big thing is that you're really just looking to get as much AP as possible, as well as adaptive helm onto her. And that could be quite good. Zoe is not a high priority for items, but she can hold Shiv quite well. And if you have any extra tiers, you can kind of throw it over to her. She's especially worth itemizing if you get Spellblade here that can make it a lot better because she's actually quite good with spell blades. And then lastly here for Rise, we talked about this a little bit
bit during the portal plus one portion of the S tier compositions. You're really just looking for as many rod items as well as anti heal onto him. And that is as strong as it's going to get. Uh, when it comes to the way that you play this, you're never going to dip below 50 gold. So on 3 1, even though this is a one cost reroll, you also really need to hit RE3. So you're only going to roll to 50 gold on 3 1. And in some circumstances, if you have a lot of copies of your one cost, then you should wait until you natural into level five on three, two, and then start rolling there to 50 gold, or at least until you get an econ charm every single turn. So those are the main ways to play this composition. It's still quite strong, still belongs in S tier and highly recommend playing it if you have a good spot for it. First up in A tier, we have a pretty niche composition. This is the Hero Augment for Elise, Spider Queen. And her best in slot is Bloodthirster, Warmogs. You pretty much always want to get those two items onto her. And then her third best item is Archangel. But this can also be a Crown Guard. It can be an Ionic Spark. It can be a Rabadons. But this is her full best here. Nasus can carry any utility items. Redemption in particular is quite strong with Shapeshifters. And then also any remaining tank items can go onto him. And eventually you want to play around Smolder Carry. Before Smolder, you might want to play around some other Rageblade carries in the back line. So something like Jinx with Namzi might be an option for you. Or you might be able to just play around Varus once you're able to find him. So you're really just looking in the early game to roll down on 3-1 for at least 3. And then eventually maybe slow roll through stage 3 if you don't find her. And you're going to look for playing around Blaster back line eventually. And you can play around Hunters until then. All right, next up in A tier, we have Pyro plus one. This requires getting a Pyro emblem either from Spatula or from one of your augments. And there are two main final boards that you're looking for here. So first of all, you're usually going to play all four of the Pyro units. And then your ideal Pyro spat holder is Smolder, but you can also play around Callista or Nyla until you're able to get to this, uh, this five cost. And then in terms of how you fill out the rest of the board, you can go for Arcana units like Hecarim, Zareth, and Camille, and this will give you a pretty well well-rounded level nine board. Then there's also the option of going for the Warrior Preserver line, which would be your Fiora, Rakan, and Morgana. Both of these are viable options. I believe the Zareth, Camille, Hecarim option is slightly stronger, but you kind of go with whichever one you have the items for or whichever one you can hit first. But you really want to try to play around Smolder when you get Pyro Emblem. Next up, we have our first reroll composition in A tier. This is Nyla Warriors, especially strong if you're able to get some of these augments on the right side here, like March of Progress, Unleash the Beast, and Keepers. When it comes to itemizing your carries, you want to make sure that you get three item Akali and three item Nyla. You really want to prioritize getting Bloodthirster onto Akali as well as Edge of Night. And then when it comes to Nyla items, Sterix is very strong. Last Whisper is very strong. Bloodthirster is actually surprisingly less necessary on Nyla because she keeps herself alive pretty well. But when it comes to Akali build, you really want to get this BT plus Edge of Night if possible. She is noticeably stronger if you're able to get those two things. And then her third item wants to be some sort of attack damage item. And leftover items go over to Katarina. You want to hold on to all of your Katarinas while rolling on six for Akali and Nyla. That way, when you level up, hopefully you have around six Katarinas. And then you can roll on seven for Katarina three and you cap around this board. All right, next up, we have another hero augment. This one's relatively straightforward. You're just looking to play as many vanguards as possible, as well as three mage. The ideal two mages that you play are Nami plus Nora. And then one thing I wanted to mention that's sort of secret tech, I guess, not many people know about it, is that if you get Marksman Toolbox, this is the thing that gives you a sniper's focus, as well as a Fishbones. Rageblade with those two items on Galio is one of his best builds. It's better performing than this build in particular here. So if you have Deja Vu, and then you get offered Marksman's Toolbox on 3-2, you have a really strong build make sure you don't miss that next up we have yet another hero augment this is the rumble hero augment Moten caramel and the main thing about this one that makes it a little bit more difficult to play is that you need really really good items on the rumble specifically you're looking for bloodthirster jeweled gauntlet and rabadons as his best in slot you really do want to get specifically these items but jeweled gauntlet in particular is very important so you can substitute rabadons i say loosely with ionic spark crown guard archangel but these things are a lot lot worse you really want it to be rabadons and specifically Archangel is pretty suboptimal. So really try to get the Rabadons. You may also be able to substitute this with Guardbreaker or Hodge, but you really want as many rods as possible. You probably shouldn't take this augment unless you already have a rod. Uh, you're probably not going to be able to get Rageblade on Tristana for that reason. So you might have to settle for some other bow item here. It's not the end of the world. Red buff would probably be the ideal one. And then of course, you're probably also not going to be able to get all of these rod items onto Mordekaiser. So you can just throw any tank items onto him that you want to. And you're just really looking to 
to play around four Vanguard, Tristana, Bard. And then when you go to level seven, you're going to add Rakan in an ideal scenario. Zillion, if you don't have Rakan yet. And then you're just going to continue to add more preservers as you level up. All right, next up, we have our first three cost reroll of a tier. This is your Wukong Jinx reroll. Pretty popular nowadays. There is a couple of augments that really make this composition quite strong. Category 5, Shimmer Scale Essence, Hunting Frenzy, and then also Spin to Win on 3-2. These are all excellent options that make this go from an A tier composition to an S tier composition. So definitely be on the lookout for those. When it comes to Jinx, you're just looking to itemize her with all bow items. Sword items generally are not that good. So if you're looking at like something like Deathblade, it's not going to be as strong on Jinx as it would be on somebody like Olaf. So the general rule of thumb here is you want as many gargoyles as possible on Wukong, as many bow items as possible on Jinx, and as many sword items as possible on Olaf. And that's it. Those are your item rules in general. Now, the other thing I want to mention is that if you have Category 5, Bis Jinx is double Runons plus Rageblade. You might be wondering, what about Lost Whisper or what about Even Shroud? Part of why that is less important in this composition is number one, Jinx does true damage with her ability. And the other thing to note here, is that when she has runons, she's actually hitting the back line. So you really don't need the last whisper for the runons procs, especially when you have category five. And then when it comes to Olaf here, BT, Edge of Night, and then GS or Deathblade are ideal. Of course, you need a lot of swords and bows to make that happen. And then one other thing I wanted to note about Wukong is that according to the stats, this build, Double Gargoyle Bloodthirster, is still best in slot, even if you don't have spin to win, which is the Wukong hero augment. So this is best in slot for sure if you have spin to win, but even if you don't have it according to what i saw in the stats this bt as the third item on wukong is actually quite strong so keep that in mind Next, real quickly, I also wanted to show another Wukong composition that is pretty much only playable if you get spin to win. This is Karma Wukong. This is a composition that was popular before when Syndra was part of the meta, and it's still quite good if you're able to get a Preserver Emblem, if you're able to get a lot of Wukongs early, and you hit the spin to win augment. Make sure that you are aware of this composition if you hit spin to win and you don't have Jinx items. Definitely try to angle this because it's quite strong. In the stats, it's one of the best performing comps in the game, but it's very situational. All right, next up we have a three cost reroll. This is Vex Vigar. There are five core units. If you don't find Nora, then you're going to play around Seraphine or Soraka. There are a couple of different ways to fill out the level seven board. You can fill it out with Honeymancer, which would be Blitzcrank plus Nunu. You can also play around something that's becoming a little bit more popular recently, which is Zillion plus Mordekaiser. The main benefit of this is if you have enough gold and resources to three star the Mordekaiser while rolling for Vex and Vigar, you might want to consider going for this. If you don't think you'll have enough resources, resources to three star the Mordekaiser before you want to push levels. Or if you're really behind on Mordekaisers, then I highly recommend you play around Honeymancer before you're able to get to the true max cap, which is playing around Zareth. So you're buying charms every single turn for Vigar's passive ability. And because of that, Zareth also scales with more charms you buy throughout the course of the game. So the absolute max cap here is to actually play around Arcana. That would look something like this. And then you can also consider playing around Taric over Hecarim here. I'm not totally sure which one is better on level eight. And then the final level nine board would be this, where you play three Arcana with the Arcana trait on Zareth. You get a ton of true damage. It's way better than Honeymancer. The quality of the units is better. And this is the full max cap. Okay, real quick, before we move on to the next composition, I wanted to real quickly show a, another option for Vex Vigar. This is Zap Attack. It's pretty rare that you're going to have the circumstances to be able to play this, but if you do get Zap Attack and you're able to win streak and you have a lot of resources, you can play around Vex Vigar instead of playing around the standard Kog'Maw build that we talked about earlier in the video. So just something to be mindful of. All right, next up, we have another standard level eight, level nine board that you can play around that's become a lot more popular recently. This is Arcana Rise. So the main idea behind this is you're trying to pair portal units with Arcana units because there's perfect crossover between those units. So there is a portal scholar. There is an Arcana scholar. There is an Arcana Bastion. There is a portal Bastion. There is a portal Vanguard. There is an Arcana Vanguard. So the crossover is relatively easy to see here. And once you find Nora, you can actually drop this Tarek for Diana for the max cap. Of course, Tarek 2 is better than Diana 1, so keep that in mind. And before you're able to find Nora, in a lot of cases, you're going to end up playing Vex, and you're going to get your 3 portal through the Tarek. So a couple of things to keep in mind here. The main thing is that you're trying to duo carry Rise plus Nami. Rise items are more important. This is true best in slot on Rise. Very difficult to get, of course. Most of the time, you're not going to be able to get it. The overall idea when it comes to Rise is you want to have anti-heal on him. Red buff is better than 
than Morello, and then as many rod items as possible. That would be the ideal setup. It's not always possible, but that's what you're trying to go for. You do not want Chojin Rise. On Nami, you're looking for utility, you're looking for Shojin or blue buff, some sort of mana item, and any other AP items that you can get onto her. And then you're looking to play around tank Tom Kench or Tarek. I have seen a little bit more of tanking Tom Kench than Tarek, so just something to keep in mind. But yeah, this is a new composition, or not new, but it's getting a lot more popular recently, and it's performing relatively well. Definitely something you want to keep in mind. The last A tier composition I want to talk about is Built Different, the augment that says you get a bonus for all of your units with no traits. So the way I've set this up in the front row is from left to right how desirable these units are. So Camille, more desirable than Diana, more desirable than Tom Kench. Olaf is the least desirable of the frontline units. And then in the back line here, same idea from left to right. That's roughly how desirable they are. The one exception here is Nora. Nora is always playable even though she has a trait because she will buff up your carry. So even though she does have a trait, it's perfectly okay. The one rule of thumb when it comes to Built Different is that upgrades trump everything. So an Olaf 2 is better than a Camille 1. All right, let me say that again. An Olaf 2 is better than a Camille 1, especially when it comes to who you're itemizing. So you want to be picking up every single one of these units that you have appropriate items for, and then just play around whatever you upgrade. Eventually, you're going to try to play around these upgraded 5 costs. Most of the time, you're not going to get there and you're going to unfortunately have to play around these four costs and that is perfectly okay. Again, remember the rule of thumb. Upgrades are everything. Two stars are better than one stars. Even if they're on the far right here, it's perfectly fine. Make sure that you're playing your upgrades. There are only two compositions I want to talk about in B tier. The first is multi-striker reroll. There are two main ways to play this. The first way is you could play it as one cost reroll, where you go for Ash plus Jax. You should only do this if you have a lot of copies, and then you roll down on 3, 1 to 30 gold, slow roll in stage 3 until you're able to hit these units, and then either push levels or roll for Cassid in 3, Akali 3 if you were able to pick up a lot of copies. The other way to play this, and the more standard way, is to push to level 6 on 3, 2, and roll down for your Cassidy two and just play it like standard two cost reroll where you're focused on Cassidy plus Akali. I've shown ideal items on both the one cost side as well as the two cost side. I believe this is best in slot Cassidy now. It's hard for me to really tell because there's not a lot of data on the patch because not a lot of people are playing this composition because it's not that meta. But if you have a really good opener for it as well as maybe a decent augment for it, you might want to consider it. One thing I want to note is that anger issues is actually quite good in this composition. Usually this augment is terrible but this is one of the only compositions. In fact, it probably is the only composition in the entire game that can use this augment. So keep that in mind if you see it. It's also a pretty fun augment, so you might as well try it out. And that is your multi-striker reroll. The last composition I want to talk about is Blaster Reroll. The main issue with this is the fact that you're rolling for three separate three costs. If you looked at the other meta three cost reroll compositions, it's called Jinx Wukong or Vex Vigar. There's only two three cost, and you only have to itemize two three cost. Whereas this one requires you to itemize three three cost and three star three three cost. Guess what's very difficult to do? Exactly that. You usually are going to pick an augment that's going to give you econ, but then you're not getting items from your augments. So the general rule of thumb here is you cannot play this unless a lot of conditions are met where you have tons of gold and you have tons of items. That's not going to happen in most games, but there are rare circumstances where it can happen. So the main thing to understand about playing this is that number one, Way is looking for blue buff Nashers plus AP. Ezreal is looking for Last Whisper, i.e., Red buff, that's like his ideal build, especially red buff here, very strong on him. Also, red buff on Hui is pretty good. Morello on Hui is pretty good. And then Mordekaiser is your primary tank here. And then secondary tank items can go onto Tom Kench, assuming you have any leftover items, which most of the time is not going to happen. But yeah, the main issue with this is that it just requires too many resources. If you are in a game or a portal that gives you a ton of resources, then you might want to consider trying this out. And that's it for the patch 14.16b tier list. The main changes here is that the nerf to Vanguard made it so that Rumble is a little bit weaker with Molten Caramel. Also, the RE Vanguard comp basically died, to be honest with you. Five Pyro is a lot weaker now. It used to be an S tier composition, now it's an A tier. And then they did nerf RE a little bit, but the Bastion RE composition is still very strong, especially if you're able to hit some good augments. They nerfed Nyla, 
This was an S tier composition. They kind of brought it down a little bit. The nerf to Fiora, honestly, I haven't felt it too much. So it probably was a good idea. And then the nerf to Nasus made a lot of sense. But again, didn't really change the tier list too much. So the big things really were those Vanguard centric compositions as well as five pyro. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll be back to making videos again. So if you were interested in the guides that I made in the past, make sure you stick around and I'll see you next time.